The story of Ormonger on 2B2T is one of bullying, grief, and revenge. Throughout his time on the server, he was often bullied and tormented to such an extent that he left 2B2T forever. And even to this day, he doesn't like mentioning his time on the server. But what could have caused him such turmoil? Well, it all started because he did nothing. Today in this video, you'll learn about the tragic tale of Ormonger and how revenge can be a double-edged sword. But before we begin, today's video is sponsored by Yahaha Studio. This is a brand new user-generated content creation platform for a 3D multiplayer interactive experience. With Yahaha, anyone can create and publish virtual experiences without coding or server knowledge. Simply use the ready-to-use components and assets in Yahaha Studio to make your dream games. Making your own creation in Yaha is very simple. As you can see, I chose the hide and seek gameplay template from the create section. To hide as an object, I went to the assets library and I picked a dog out of all the assets. After that, I went back into the asset library, clicked on components, found the behavior underscore player transformation component and added it to the dog. When I clicked on play, all I had to do was walk toward the dog and I transformed into a dog. Yahaha hosts regular live sessions for the community to help creators enhance their building skills. You can also follow Yahaha on Twitch or watch the previous sessions on YouTube. So make sure to check out Yahaha using the link in the description below and you can start making your epic creations. This story begins in early 2014. After being on a temporary map for an extended period of time, 2B2T finally returned to its main map. And with this change came a new player to the server, a mysterious player known as Javazon. As Javazon roamed the vast and treacherous lands of the server, he couldn't help but boast about his plans and chat to grief some of the most well-known and formidable bases on the server at the time. Passytown, NFE, and the Valley of Wheat were all on Javazon's hit list, and he was determined to track them down and destroy them. As Javazon's boasting became increasingly annoying, so too did the resentment and hostility of many other players. They wanted nothing more than to see Javazon gone and his connections to the server completely severed. Speculation ran rampant as players tried to uncover any information they could about Javazon and his associates. And somehow, through the grapevine of whispers and gossip, the name Ormonger became linked with Javazon. Despite the speculation and rumors swirling around Ormonger's supposed connection to Javazon, the truth was much simpler. Ormonger was a quiet, solitary player who preferred to keep to himself. He rarely spoke in chat, choosing to spend his time building and exploring the server on his own. As the rumors and speculation about Ormonger's connection to Javazon spread, more players became angry and frustrated. They saw Ormonger as a threat and were determined to get rid of him once and for all. A player named Popbob, a well-known griefer on the server, had access to a powerful module called Thunderhead, which allowed Popbob to gather the coordinates of Ormonger's base with ease. Once Popbob had the coordinates, it was shared with the rest of the group, and they planned to meet at a specific time. It was a moment that would go down in the server's history. On June 4th, 2014, a group of around 17 to 20 players gathered at Ormonger's base, determined to end his supposed connection to Javazon once and for all. The grief was swift and brutal. The players tore through the base, and as they stood victorious in the aftermath of their attack, they left behind a series of signs that read, This is what happens when you grief XCC2. XCC2 griefs you. Owned. Enlisting the names of each member of the group. But despite their bravado, it seems that the details of the attack were a bit hazy. According to XCC2, he wasn't even sure why they had targeted Ormonger's base in the first place. He remembers being pulled into the raid by Pyrobite and Sato86, but beyond that, the details were fuzzy. The group also took screenshots of themselves sitting in front of the ruined base, symbolizing their victory and feeling a sense of pride and accomplishment. After the grief, Ormonger took it personally. And as he pieced together the evidence, it became clear that he knew exactly who was behind the attack. Since the griefers left science and took screenshots of themselves standing in front of the ruined base, Ormonger had no trouble identifying them. And with this information in hand, Ormonger set out on a mission of revenge. Before all of this occurred, one of the griefers, Jack the Ripper, returned to his base, Valkyria. 
and secretly rebuilt it in May 2014. With the help of Pyrobite and XCC2, Jack thought they had rebuilt Valkyria without anyone noticing. But this was wrong. One day, while wandering through the base, Jack spotted a player named McBrainBomb. Determined to protect his rebuilt home, Jack attacked and killed McBrainBomb. Little did he know, McBrainBomb was an alternate account of Javazon. After most of the players from Valkyria destroyed Ormonger's base, Ormonger, still seething with anger over the destruction of his base, was giving coordinates to Valkyria from Javazon and launched a devastating attack on Valkyria, leaving nothing but rubble. Throughout the year, Ormonger would grieve many more bases, saying himself hundreds of bases, most notable being Snacky Norse Library. It seemed as though Ormonger had finally achieved his goal of revenge, destroying base after base in his quest for retribution. But as it turns out, this was only the beginning of Ormonger's turmoil on the server. Around this time, Ormonger took an anti-bigotry stance in chat, making him a target for the edgier players on the server. Popbob decided to spread a rumor that Ormonger was not very kind to his wife. This rumor quickly spread, becoming one of the most commonly used phrases to taunt Ormonger throughout his time on 2 b 2 t Despite his best efforts, Ormonger sometimes struggled to shake off the taunts and insults of the edgier players on the server. These players knew that if they could get under Ormonger's skin and get a reaction from him, they would be able to continue tormenting him and get the satisfaction they craved. Ormonger was a skilled redstone engineer, renowned for his item sorters. Some players accused Ormonger of causing lag on the server with his machines, although there was little evidence to support these claims, which caused more harassment toward him. After the events of the third incursion, Ormonger and another player named Bran Nillen knew that they needed a change of scenery. They decided to leave the chaos of spawn behind and head out into the wilderness, determined to build a new home for themselves. And so, they set their sights on a place they called King's Landing. It was an enormous base, filled with ambitious projects, joined by around 20 members, all eager to build anything they wanted. But as with all things on 2B2T, the peace was short-lived. It all started with iTristan accidentally leaking the base in the public chat while trolling Ormonger. In an instant, the location of King's Landing was leaked to the entire server, and Ormonger and Silver Crown King had to destroy the base as they knew it was only a matter of time before someone else destroyed it. The leak of King's Landing's location had an unintended spark for I Tristan. As it turned out, he found trolling Ormonger amusing, which will become more evident soon. The fall of King's Landing was a devastating blow to Ormonger and his allies, but it was not the end of their story. Determined to rebuild and rise from the ashes, they set out to create a new base in December 2015. Together with Kinorana, Ormonger founded Kinograd Base, a sprawling and ambitious location that quickly grew to become an enormous base on the server. Many members of King's Landing joined this base, eager to start anew and rebuild what had been lost. As Kinograd Base was being built, Itristan and his group created a server backdoor that would change the course of 2B2T. Their primary goal was to use the backdoor to back up Imperator's base and create stashes of illegal items throughout the server. But as they delved deeper into the backdoor, they became curious. They wanted to see what else they could find, so they began using it to seek out other bases on the server. It wasn't long before they stumbled upon one of Ormonger's bases, and they knew they had to act. Itristan and his group launched a griefing attack on the base, determined to make Ormonger angry and get a rise out of him. Ormonger's troubles on 2 b 2 t were far from over. On April 10th, 2016, Ormonger reportedly received IRL threats from Itristan and Clyde, and he reached out to a player named Jerry2013, who had been in Itristan's group for a time. In the message, Ormonger said, So you're friends with iTristan and C1Y3DI, right? Okay, well, you can let them know they need to quit IRL threats and attempts to dox me. But Jerry2013 replied, No, I hate them. Attempts? We already have your full dox. Go ahead and report us. Ormonger responded, I just about have enough to go to the police, but I'd really rather not. Jerry2013 retorted, Yeah because you will also be arrested because they are both minors. Nobody will come forward anyway. Ormonger insisted, I've done nothing wrong. Just let them know not to give me an excuse to take the next step. 
but Jerry 2013 shot back. You wouldn't dare. They didn't even threaten your family? Warmonger replied, Yes, they have. In any case, just tell them what I've said. Only a week after this exchange, I Tristan's group launched a week-long campaign of destruction that would come to be known as the Week of Destruction. During this week, I Tristan and his group targeted major bases all across the server, leaving a trail of destruction in their wake. Kinograd base was not spared, and before the day they had planned to grief it, I Tristan took extra measures to ensure that they couldn't be traced. He purchased a batch of Minecraft accounts with barcode numbers for their usernames, allowing him and his group to secretly grief the base without anyone being able to track down who was responsible. As soon as they had the coordinates, they set out on a mission of destruction, traveling through the nether by boat and using a module called V-Clip to fly under the nether. When they arrived at Kinograd base, it was 4am on April 20th, but they didn't care. They were on a mission determined to see it through. They recorded the grief and saved the video as a draft on OneDrive, but they never expected it to be discovered. But fate had other plans. Kina Rana, also a base member, stumbled upon the video while poking around in Clyde's public OneDrive folder. And with this discovery, the truth was revealed. I Tristan and his group were behind the grief. Most players had suspected them all along, but now they had the needed proof. Clyde would re-edit most of the video, and on June 8th, 2016, it was released on his channel with the title, Operation No War Monger. Throughout the video, it was implied that while they were griefing, they were allegedly traveling to Ormonger's house. On the same day that the video was released, a Reddit post was made discussing the video. In the comments, a player named Sato86 accused Itristan and his group of Ormonger using lag as an excuse to harass him. Sato86 wrote, You used the lag as an excuse to harass him. You destroyed everything, yet the lag continued. Funny, huh? You just needed an excuse to destroy Kinograd after your back door was leaked and proved. Plus, you tracked his IP and tried to find him IRL over a block game. You better watch what you do, because he could have sued you for harassment. And if that picture is truly him, he still can. Ormonger replied, Thankfully, they don't know who I am IRL. If they did, they would hear from the police, not any lawyer. And I've saved all the evidence. Surprised they put this on YouTube. Now it exists forever. In an interview by Bezo Pazin, he asked I Tristan if someone showed up at Ormonger's house, which was his response. I think it tells me that we did a good job with the video, because <laughs> we've never actually like harassed Ormonger in real life or anything like that. But in the video, it was implied that while we were griefing, we were also like ding dong ditching his house or something like that. But we just like ding dong ditched a random house, but it was implied that it's Ormonger's house in the video. This was the final straw for Ormonger. It was the last straw in a long series of torment, harassment, and bullying that Ormonger had endured on the server. He must have wondered if staying on the server and facing such constant abuse was worth it. In the end, Ormonger decided to leave 2v2t and move on to another server, Constantium. However, this hasn't stopped the torment for Ormonger. Many players still have negative thoughts about Ormonger, and from what old players have said in the past, he actively avoids anything related to 2B2T. One of the key takeaways from Ormonger's experiences on 2B2T is the importance of not getting caught up in the drama and negativity of toxic or edgy players. While it can be tempting to engage with these players and try to fight back against their harassment and torment, this often only serves to escalate the situation and make things worse. Warmonger learned this lesson the hard way, as he allowed himself to get caught up in their attempts to anger him and became a target. If he had simply ignored these players from the start, they would likely have lost interest in him and moved on to other things. However, it's important to recognize the severity of the harassment and torment that Ormonger faced. It's completely unacceptable for anyone to be threatened in real life because of something that happened in the video game.